Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Welcome to all of you uh, To our third the third, third installment Not only the first one It's the very first one That was that was very very, very first one Last time this year Then we had uh, installments So this is the third installment But it's the fourth one lah, The fourth of the series So we, we, we last year Let's give a brief you know, overview of uh, What we are doing eh uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim right, So basically This entire series I right, was started off right, uh, Just to answer uh, Issues, right, questions that people Are facing right, That uh, we feel that maybe uh, They're not being directly addressed right, Maybe uh, uh, to the more They don't know where to look for For the answers right, for all these things right, And last year we had an open session right, The first thing last, around this time last year Was an open session where people could ask whatever they want to ask. Right? Then we realized that the questions were so, so many questions and so varying, which is why uh, myself and my cousin and my mother over there, right, uh, we decided that you know, it's important that we compartmentalize right? so that those who are interested in this topic may come for that topic. Those who are interested in another topic, they'll come for that topic. And those who are interested in this particular topic, they'll come for this topic. Right? And, and I've seen right, throughout the, uh, this series different pieces, which means that maybe people are going for a topic that they actually they find issues in. Right? So we began with a topic about uh, the creation, existence, right? where are we here. Right? That, was the first, um, that was the first topic that we went through. Right? And if you have missed out on any of the topics, right, you can always uh, download the app, the right, speaker. Right? It's all recorded. Right? So you can actually tune in from whatever you have missed out on. And I'm working on getting the slides uploaded right, onto a website. So people can actually go and look for the previous uh, slides right, if you want to find if you want to have the slides. So alhamdulillah, right, the first topic we spoke about existence and the point of creation and why are we here in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and God and why do we believe in God? What are the proofs for the beliefs in God? Right, for people who have you know they are grappling right, with this, right, because uh, you know uh, Imam Mazali has mentioned that you know the one don't, you have not truly believed right, and, until you see the proofs for yourself and then you believe. Right, so we are also people who don't you don't just you know copy what people say, right, but your belief is a belief right, when you uh, when you truly see the science around you and then you truly believe in this matter. Right, so whether you're born Muslim or you're a convert, right, you are someone who you, you, you believe because you choose to believe. Right, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Then we had our second run right, uh, uh, a few months ago, right, whereby we spoke about. Uh, the, the, the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and why it's so important for us to understand the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So today in our next uh, segment, right, we are going to go into the qada and the qadar. Right? The qada and the qadar on predestination and free will, right? Whereby we we see how is this is this one of the pillars of our faith. Right? It is of the six pillars of our faith as Muslims. Right, that we have to, we must believe. It is compulsion on every believer right, to believe that everything is predestined. Right, it is predestined, right, and we believe in the decree of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. At the same time, right, it is balanced out with free will. Right, there is a portion whereby, you know, you you are you are you have a choice, and you're being going to be held account to your choices. Right, so today, how we're going to do this is that, inshallah, uh, because I I I'm anticipating from your questions, inshallah, we also open up the questions that people have sent in. Right, so that we can address them one by one. Right, so more structured, like those have been with us from, from before, more structured. Right, we're going to have the questions out, right, displayed, and then we're always going to uh, try to address uh, as, as, as far as we are able to, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, help us. Right, so, uh, without further ado, we're going to invite Staza Maria. Are you ready? Right, Staza Maria, right, she will do the first part. So they can, this, this talk will be in three parts. Right, the first part, Right, will be basically uh, now introduction. Right, and then second part by uh, the three of us, myself, my mother, who's the Maria, right, uh, and my cousin, who's the Maria. Right, she she will explain to you right, what do we believe exactly, and right, how do we understand qadar and qadar exactly. Right, uh, so the Maria, she is a graduate from uh, the University of Fatah right, in Syria, right, whereby she uh, she she. Her specialization was in Usuluddin, right, which is the foundations of the religion. Which is why, if you've been following us, she's always doing the, the first part, right, whereby it's the Aqidah part. 
Right. And then uh, my mother, right, she's a Quran or she's a Quran teacher, right? She's a Quran specifically tafsir, the meanings of the verses in the Quran, right? Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Right, and she will speak about a few verses, right, in the Quran that speak about choice, right, and our free will. Right? And I will end off uh, uh, speaking about life, right? Because at the end of after speaking about all of these things, we must understand that how does it apply to me? Right, as you know, as a believer, or as someone who wants to believe, or as, or how to explain to my children what's the point of all of these things. Right, so we're going to the, the practical aspect of all of these things because if aqidah, there's always there is this belief. You you believe, right, and then you're gonna look into the practical aspect of how it helps you through your life. Right, so alhamdulillah, right, Sadamarna, if you would like, if you're ready, get started. <coughs> Firstly, uh, we will start with Surah Al-Fatiha. I've been given to share today is Qada uh, and Qadar. This word Qada and Qadar. Qada and Qadar is in Arabic. Uh, firstly, I, I will say that I have never studied this topic. I, I've never taught this topic in English before. Normally, it's either Malay or Arabic. So, excuse me if I uh, am a bit slow in thinking out of words. Okay, Qada and Qadar. Can I hear? Qada and Qadar Qada and Qadar means Qada and Qadar Okay, we'll go into to what it really means Firstly, when I say Qada and Qadar uh, The English translation is predestination Qada right? and Qadar or, or predestination so if uh, when I'm talking and I uh, happen to say Qadda and Qadar, you know I mean predestination, okay? When we be, believe in Qadda and Qadar is the sixth pillar of faith, right? First is belief in Allah. Look at the hadith. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the saying of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Al-Iman an tu'mina billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wal yawmil akhiri wa tu'mina bil qadari khayrihi wa shatihi. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, PBUH is peace be upon him. Or sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The Iman is to believe in Allah, his angels, his books, his prophets, and the final day, and to believe in the predestination, the good of it, and the bad. Meaning the good predestinations, the good things which Allah has decreed, and also the bad which happened. Okay, um, belief in al qada wal qadar in predestination is the sixth. So it's Allah number one, then belief in His angels number two, belief in His books number three, belief in His prophets number four, belief in the final day number five, and belief in the predestination number six. Okay, if you look at the hadith. Allah, uh, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Believe in Al-Iman, right? Can you look at the Arabic there? 
Okay, can you see to highlight the red words and to mean to mean is to believe. Okay, so Allah uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to believe in Allah, the angels, the books, the prophets, and the day of judgment. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam repeated and to believe in qadar. So he repeated the to believe two times. Okay, why is that so? Okay, normally when I, I give you an example, for example, we say, uh, I say to my son, okay, go to the shop and buy fish, chicken, rice, and, um, rice, and buy chocolate. Okay, why would I say and buy again? Why would I repeat the and buy? For emphasis, right? I want to say, okay, please don't forget to buy my chocolate, okay, for example. So I'm saying the second part to, as a strong reminder. So, um, some of the scholars have said that why is this tukmina repeated two times? They repeated the second time only for the qadar because some people might believe in all of those things on top but to believe in qadar, some people might mess up the belief. Some people might find it difficult to believe that qadar. So, Rasulullah SAW says to believe in the decree, in the predestination that Allah has set is a thing that is very important and is something that we cannot, uh, that is very important for our life. Uh, and also, the scholars have said also that belief in the predestination is something which is a bit difficult for us to believe because it concerns Allah's work. It's not of our work. To predestine what, has happened, what will happen is Allah's job. And Allah's wisdom, Allah's knowledge is infinite and something that we can really encompass all of it because it uh, concerns the whole of the universe and everything in the universe. Like for example, we can never understand if we say uh, one of the things, something that Allah can do is Allah can hit, uh, Allah can use hundred stones to hit hundred birds in one hit. For example, okay, this is an example. So we can't understand how somebody can do it, but Allah can do it because that's that's Allah. Allah is the God. That's why Allah can do. Uh, that's we have no doubt that Allah can do all of these things because of that. Because we believe that Allah does all this and Allah joins all the tracks in the whole world. Everybody is linked to somebody. Everybody is linked to something and it all links up in one, one whole big picture and it's all Allah's, Allah's creation. All of Allah's creations. So since this predestination it, it is linked to Allah's everything, Allah's knowledge, Allah's power is something that we can't fully encompass. So the Scholars say that it's not uh, it's advisable not to delve in it too deep, but we can try and understand what is necessary for us. But to un- totally understand what it really encompass- encompasses, we can't really understand because we if, even something happening in Jurong, I can know now. So Allah knows what is happening to every single person, not only outwardly but in the heart of every every single person. Okay, so it's something that we can't understand. I can't. I don't know what Ustaz Farina is thinking also. Uh, so uh, that is our limits but Allah knows every single thing so it, the belief in Allah Qadar the scholars say whatever we can understand we understand whatever we cannot understand we just leave it aside and leave it to Allah to understand okay okay so our belief in Qadha and Qadar is based on two things the hadith just now the saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam just now the second thing we base it on is Allah's Attributes. We talked about Allah's 20 obligatory attributes the last time. So three of them are Allah's will, Allah's knowledge and Allah's power. Allah's infinite will, Allah's infinite knowledge and Allah's infinite power. Okay, I'll just recap a bit. Allah's infinite knowledge is that Allah knows every single thing until... Uh, Allah knows uh, what will happen to me tomorrow. Allah, Allah knows every single breath I will be taking from the time I was born, from the time I went out of my mother's womb, till my last breath when I die. Allah knows every single thing um, in the past and in the present and in the future. And Allah's knowledge is azad, from azad. That means it was here before creation. It had no starting. As I said last time, uh, whoever wants to uh, know more about it can... Uh, listen to it on speaker inshallah so that's knowledge so Allah's infinite knowledge and then in Allah's infinite will Allah's infinite will Allah's infinite will is that Allah has the will to do anything he does he wants to do 
and nobody can stop stop him and there is no limit to what he can do and the will was there before creation also fil azan meaning before creation or there was no starting to it okay and allah's power also allah's power is infinite power power which is there's no limit to it and he can do any every single thing he wants to do anything he wants to do without anybody stopping him okay so these three attributes of allah knowledge will and power from these three attributes we get the concept of al-qada and al-qadar from the concepts of predestination so in arabic the word predestination consists of two parts qada and qadar okay so qada is made up of you see qada there on top qada qada is made up of will and knowledge okay so what is qada okay so qada is made up of will and knowledge and qadar is made up of knowledge and power okay what do i mean by this Okay, so the meaning I'm going to go through the definition of qada and qadar what the scholars say. So the definition of qada is Allah's knowledge since azal. Azal means before creation or meaning no starting. It was there. It has been there all the time about how before time was before time existed also about how everything will be in the future according to Allah's will. There's no addition there but what is meant here is according to Allah's will. So Allah's knowledge what Allah has known since the starting of time since before creation about how everything will be everything will happen in the future in the coming time. Okay, not our future but in the future because this Allah's knowledge Allah's qada came before creation. So Allah knows everything which will happen from the starting of creation till the end of time. And after that also and before that also everything Allah knows. Okay? So that is uh, according to Allah's will. So Allah's knowledge is according how everything will be according to how he will see it, not how according to how we will it. Okay? Al-Qadar. Qadar is the actual happening of these things exactly according to Allah's knowledge since azal before creation. Okay, so you see the actual happening so these things have been decreed, have been qada, have been in Allah's knowledge since this before Allah created everyone. Okay? Before Allah created any creation. So the knowledge has been there and the will for all these things to happen has been there and when it really happens is by Allah's qadar from Allah's power with Allah's power so he is able to do it sometimes we plan things but we are not able to execute them so Allah plans and Allah executes exactly how he wants and he has the power to do it subhanallah and he is it is according to his knowledge since azal since before creation so the actual happening the happening of these things things which things the things which Allah's knowledge has known exactly according to Allah's knowledge exactly according to how the knowledge how Allah knew it would happen since azal since before creation this knowledge is what which was there before creation uh, is this clear any questions any questions okay so this is the con- concept of qada and qadar okay so from here you can see that it is obligatory for us to believe that all of the actions of human kind all the actions all the things which happen in creation everything linked to creation will happen according to Allah's knowledge and Allah's will okay and Allah will let them happen whenever Allah has said at the period of time Allah has ordained that they will happen according to the exactly to according to the specific details that Allah has said that they will happen Okay, that is qada and qadar. Okay, this is, this is the meaning of qada and qadar. This is the meaning of pre- predestination in Islam. Okay, so if you can see the meaning of qada and qadar or predestination in Islam is talking about Allah. Does it have anything to do with us? It's Allah. It's Allah's knowledge, God's knowledge, God's will, God's power to make things happen exactly how God wants it to happen. That's it. Okay. So that's qada and qadar, predestination. Okay, so uh, before I go into this, um, if you see, uh, the concept of predestination in Islam has no link whatsoever to our actions. It's just Allah. It's just we, when we believe in qada and qadar, we believe in predestination, we believe that whatever has been in Allah's knowledge and whatever Allah has willed and whatever Allah wants to happen will happen when Allah wants it to happen according to how Allah wants it to happen and Allah is able to make it happen because of his power okay so that is what predestination is okay so now we will think okay that's 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 the part that part so this this part needs to be understood clearly first 
So, uh, to, in order for us to clear our mind, so we know what uh, is meant by predestination of Allah and Qadar in Islam. Okay, next. <coughs> now, what about us? Okay, what is this? The why when we believe in Qadar and Qadar? Okay, so that's our belief that Allah can do anything He wants according to His knowledge. Uh, what about us? What is it? What is it to us? When we believe that Allah has planned everything from start, from the starting of time, and it will happen how Allah wants it to happen, okay, if something happens different from how Allah wants it to happen, does it mean that, what does it mean? It means Allah is not perfect, right? That means Allah has planned something. If it happens different from how Allah has planned it, it means that Allah is not perfect and that is not true Allah is perfect Allah is perfect Allah has Allah has no flaws okay so we, what we believe when we believe in qada and qadar is everything that Allah has planned it will happen exactly how it is so now that means our lives do we uh, follow many questions when I, I saw some of the questions uh, I noticed that many of them are saying if if it is true that means whatever we do is Allah also something which Allah has predestined so what about what we do? What is our part? Okay. So before I talk about that, I'll talk about that uh, in the next slide, inshallah. This slide first. Okay. The uh, scholars they have said that Allah's creations. Okay, I, uh, I, when I mean by creation, I'm not saying uh, human beings. Uh, I'm, uh, human beings are inside creation. Everything else is also creation. Meaning, uh, our emotions, our thoughts, our actions, human beings, and also animals and. The whole universe, what I mean by creations is everything, okay? So Allah's creations, all of Allah's creations, all of God's creations, uh, there are two types. There are the type that is not given choice and the type that is granted choice. Okay. Not granted choice. Okay, things other than human beings, they are not gra- most of them are not granted choice, okay? Uh, the universe, the movement of um, the celestial bodies, for example, movement of the planets, the sun, the earth, all of them are not given choice and they have to succumb to Allah's will and Allah's knowledge. They succumb to Allah's will. Whatever Allah wants for them, they will follow. They will have to follow. They are forced to follow. Okay? They are not given choice. Okay, for human beings, are there parts of us which we are not given choice on? Yeah, that means uh, our shivering... Our uh, our sleep. Sometimes we are just too overcome by sleep. Not when we ch- uh, choose to sleep and we lie down and we're waiting for sleep to come. But I mean, when uh, sleep comes, we have no control about what, over what happens during sleep. Sleep. Uh, our how we were born. Uh, to whom we were born. Our parents. In what period of time? From the starting of time to the, till the ending of time that we were born. Um, our uh, our genetical makeup. Some uh, uh, scholars say that uh, uh, now that we know, uh, the, they have found out all this about this genetical makeup. It's all also things that were not given. We were not given choice on. Okay. So actually, there is a big part of us that we are not given choice on. Okay. So Allah's creations. There is the part that we are, there is no choice given. Okay. So when there is no choice given, there will be no accountability. So all Allah's creations which we are not given choice on, we will not be accountable for. So for example, uh, I was, uh, I was uh, given birth to by a okay, I was uh, Samah Allah. Okay, somebody was given out uh, was uh, given birth to by somebody out of wedlock. Okay, not out of uh, married parents. So this person, he. He or she might complain, okay, we, uh, I don't have a father from young, for example, whatever they might say. Okay, that is something which there is no choice given. So the person will not be held accountable on the day of judgment. Allah, cannot, uh, Allah will not, not say, out of Allah's just, just uh, Allah's, uh, I think, Allah's fairness. Allah will not say, um, oh, it's your fault you were uh, born to a mother who didn't have a husband. Okay. You won't be held accountable for everything which was not your choice. So, for example, somebody um, somebody went in front of the teacher and then she shivered. The teacher won't say, why are you shivering? I will punish you for shivering. The teacher won't because she, she or he, uh, unless he, he, there's something wrong with him or her. Lah. 
but uh, you know that all of us know that things where we where we are not given choice on we won't punish people for that okay so Allah's creations which uh, parts of us of human beings and I'm not talking about the other creations all most of them are not given any choice like animals they follow their instinct that's why we cannot say it's wrong for a cat to eat her baby baby cat it is it, uh, you know like the cats eat their baby cats like the kittens right if they're too hungry eh? is it she ever told me about it right before the male cat okay the male cat the male cat eats the kittens <laughs> so um you cannot say the cat is wrong can you would, would you beat the cat for it it's animal instinct right so that's uh, something which is not given choice okay that's allah's wisdom why all the animals do, are not given choice for things that uh, happen now Okay. Not given choice. So I hope you are clear. And Allah's creations, where we are not given choice, we will not be accountable for. Okay. So granted choice. Okay. What is this granted choice part? Granted choice is, for example, we are given the choice to eat or to not eat, or to sleep or to not sleep, or to study or to not study. All of these are things which are we we are granted choice for. Okay, so next question. Since Allah has created my actions, all my actions, from what I have said, all our actions, even the ones which are granted choice, is created by Allah, correct? Right? Does this mean I am being forced to do what He has planned for me? You get my question, huh? Is it a clear question? Okay, since Allah has created my actions, does this mean I am being forced to do what He has planned for me? Okay, all of Allah's creations, I go back to the previous slide. Okay, so F, like just now I said, we, things which are, we are not given choice on, we will not be accountable. But we will be accountable for this choice that Allah gave. Allah gave human beings, only human beings. Okay, so if you ask, why do I want this choice? Maybe I didn't want this choice. All of us agreed to accept this choice. Uh, so Zafarana will talk more about that later. So uh, all of us agrees, agreed to uh, accept this choice, al- although we remember it or we don't remember it. That's why Allah sent prophets to remind us of this choice that we accepted. Okay. Uh, I'll put that aside first. Okay, so we were granted choice. Okay, so when we were granted choice, this choice is according to Allah's decree also. Okay, so I'll give you an example. Um, a teacher, I hope uh, all of us, can, I think all of us can relate to teacher-student examples because uh, all of us have either been student, uh, all of us must have been students before and we might be teachers also. So teachers and students. Okay, when I have a student, I tell my student, okay, you uh, study for your exam okay you study for your exam and I'll make I'll set the test paper I'll set the test paper okay through the whole year I have one uh, very uh, hard-working student I have one uh, weak student uh, and who's quite lazy so this hard-working student the whole year he's, he performs well in all his uh, daily tasks I know what so I know I know exactly which questions he gets correct and which questions he'll get wrong and uh, very rarely lah, maybe he'll get like 99 percent for the for all his papers Okay, this lazy student will tend to get the same questions wrong all over again. I think teachers will know that lazy students get the same questions wrong all over again. They'll do the question and you make them re- repeat the thing in the next test and they'll do the same mistakes again. Okay, so these two students, when I make my exam paper, I will know which questions they will get correct, which questions most probably this person will get wrong, this, this lazy student. Okay, so is it wrong for me to make this question that I know he'll get wrong? Is it wrong for me to do that? No, I'm doing. I'm making a fair paper. I'm making a paper based on like twenty percent difficult. You know the marking scheme. So I'm making paper. The paper based on my fairness. My uh, how how I know I should make the paper. So I know roughly which questions he'll get wrong, and he's given a choice to answer the questions. And is he supposed to question me? Why after the paper? Why did you make this question? You know I'll get it wrong. He can't say that because it was on him to work hard. Okay, so these things which we are granted choice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what are our choices. But do we know our choices? We do not know our choices. When I said qadar qadar just now, qadar qadar is Allah's decree in His knowledge. His knowledge we do not know. So when He told us you work for it, He knows what will happen. But we do not know. So we work for the thing that He has planned. But we do not know what He has planned. Since we do not know, we do our best. Like a student, we the most probably the student the teacher has said okay this person will fail that lazy student will fail but when the person really fails he cannot blame the teacher why did you make me fail because he is the one who didn't work hard for it is this clear 
I'll give another example. Uh, this is an example given by Sheikh Wuti Rahimahullah. Uh, Sheikh Wuti is one of the uh, leading, was one of the leading scholars of uh, Aqidah. He still is, but he has uh, been martyred in Syria. Rahimahullah. So what did he say? He said, um, I, hear the, I hear the call to prayer, the azan. The azan or the call to prayer. Uh, so uh, first I think, okay, should I... Okay, the azan for the morning prayer, the subuh prayer. Okay, that's the most. Uh, that's one of the hardest salahs because you have to wake up from salat for for your prayer. So you think, okay, should I wake up or should I sleep back? If I sleep back, most probably I'll sleep until you know uh, the sal- the sleep after the azan subuh uh, subuh azan the morning prayer azan is very deadly. If you sleep, most probably you you uh, miss your prayer. Uh, Subhanallah, it's a very nice sleep. You are, I don't know. For me, uh, if I te- if I sleep and I tend to, if I happen to extend after the salat, it will be a sleep which will, we shall have many dreams which will be quite long. I don't know if any of you experience that. Do you? <laughs> Allah alam that shaitan is work to disturb us. Okay, so Sri Sri Buti said. Okay, so I hear the azan. Allah has given me strength. The, um, Allah has given me strength. My whole body strength to wake up if I want to. Okay, if I want strength to wake up or strength to sleep back and give me a nice sleep also can okay, so Allah has given me strength Allah has given me uh, water so I can go toilet to freshen up to take my ablution if I want to okay, so Allah has made for us all these are made not, not our choice okay? our body our uh, healthy body water that we have all these were given to us by Allah okay? Allah gave us all these things then he said, okay, now you make your choice. Okay, that choice also was made by him also. But that choice, he, it was of his will to make it a choice. And his, uh, what he has planned will be according to the choice. Okay, I'll explain a bit more about that later. Okay, so the, the choice that we make, the choice that we make is the, okay, the Sheikh used the word decision. So our decision that we make, that is the decision that will give us rewards or will bring us punishment. Also, also punishment, rewards and punishment. So when the the choice or the decision that you plan to do, that is the one which you will be held accountable for. But you will not be held accountable to your body. Okay? Let's say somebody wants to wake up for subuh, but he is bedridden, for example. Okay, he is bedridden. That is Allah's choice. Allah gave him sickness to test him. Okay, so he's bedridden. He wants to wake up for subuh. He's not able to. So Allah won't say, why didn't you wake up to go to the toilet to take wudu, to take your ablution? Since he can't, right? So he won't be accountable for not waking up. But in Islam, our salah, even when our prayer, when we are sick, we are supposed to do prayer also. If we can't stand up, we can sit down. If we can't sit down, we can lie down. If we can't move, we are paralyzed, we can pray with our eyes. So there is no excuse for missing any prayer at all in Islam. So, if the person was bedridden, he will not be held accountable for not waking up to go to take his evolution, but he will be held accountable for not praying with his eyes, for example. So what he can do, he has to do. That's his part. Okay. So the choice that Allah gave, Allah will help us. We will be held accountable for our choice and our decision, decisions, not the action, not the things around the action. So our action also, Allah created our action, our strength to stand up to do our whatever Allah has asked us to do. Okay, is this clear? So I look at the question again. Since Allah has created my actions, does this mean I am being forced to do what he has, he has planned for me? So two main points is we do not know Allah's decree. Since we do not know Allah's decree, we cannot say we are forced. We do not know the teacher. Does, the student does not know that the teacher has in her mind that you will fail. She might have said it lah, but he does not. If she didn't say it, he he doesn't know it. He doesn't know it's a decree. Right? So we do not know Allah's decree. Because we do not know Allah's decree, it's our job to work hard. And we are not forced because we do not know. Okay, if we knew, then it, we would be forced. But since we do not know Allah's decree, that's why we are not forced. Allah's decree, whatever Allah has ordained or predestined for us, we do not know. Okay? Okay, and the next part, Kullun muyassarun lima khuliqalah. And everything is made easy for what Allah has created it for. Um, this uh, this this is a hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh, it came because uh, one day the sahabas, the companions, they were in a funeral. They were in a place where it was a funeral. So all of them followed the funeral, and the person was buried. 
Then Rasulullah SAW came and he sat down and everybody, all his companions who were there, they sat around him. So Rasulullah SAW said, Every single one of you, Allah knows. Will he have a place? Uh, Allah knows his place, whether it will be in heaven or in hellfire. Okay? So the sahabas, they, had, they do have the same questions as us. So what did the sahaba ask? One of the sahaba, one of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he asked, um, does that mean uh, we do not have to work and leave it up to our decree? Because since you said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, am I supposed to be in hellfire or am I supposed to be in heaven? So since Allah knows, I do not have to work for it. Why do I have to work for it? The sahaba asked, the companion asked. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I'malu, before this part, before this kullun, before this word, there's an i'malu. I'malu means work for it. Just perform your deeds. Everything is made easy for what Allah has created it for. Okay, so I don't know what Allah has planned for me. But I will do my best. Uh, so I haven't, uh, I have not finished the hadith. So uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, everything is made easy for what Allah has created it for. Whoever Allah has said will be of the people who are happy, meaning the people of heaven, they will do things, they will end up doing things of the people of heaven. And whoever is of the people of hellfire, they will end up doing things which are of the people of the hellfire. End up meaning not end up for being forced to do it, but we have our decisions are to do it. Okay, but our decisions are our decisions. They are not decisions which are forced on us. They are decisions, decisions which we have the free will to do. So it's up to us to choose and Allah and it will be made easy. Allah will make it easy for us to reach what we want. So, like the teacher and student example just now, the, the teacher, the student are teacher, you will do this type of question, you will do what question, what question will come out, then the teacher said, just study. It will be easy for you if you study. But if you don't study, then you will not then you will be the failing group of failing people. Lah. Okay? So we do not know Allah's decree. So back to the question just now. Since Allah has created my actions, does this mean I am being forced to do what He, is, he has planned for me? So I'll repeat that. I am not forced because I do not know what has been planned for me. Allah knows what will happen. Okay, again, Allah knows what will happen. But I do not know what is happen, what will happen. So I am not forced to do that. Okay, example, this A person, Allah has said that he will be in paradise. But does he know he will be in paradise? No. But the things he does in life, the decisions he does in life, will lead him to become of the people of paradise. Okay, since we do not know, we cannot say, oh, I'm doomed to, the, I'm, uh, Allah, this, this is a normal, the, when, uh, when I look at all the, uh, akid, uh, the, cre- the aqidah, the books on creed, on Islamic creed, I realize that this has been a question from the starting of Islam. Like I just just now, I said the companions used to ask that, and the people after that they used to ask that. And every all the time, people had until the some of the scholars were saying, some people this these books that I read were all written like maybe in 300, 400 hijrah hijrah. Now we are in 1440. Yeah? We are now 1440 hijrah in the Islamic calendar. So in the uh, since. 200s, 300s, 400s, people have been asking these questions and they have reached the, they have done the same excuses also. Uh, they have said, um, oh, uh, when you do bad, why, do, uh, why didn't you not do it? They say, oh, Allah has destined this for me. Or, uh, why did you, uh, why didn't you do this? Oh, because uh, Allah planned it for me like this. Okay, so Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, well, once he asked one sahaba, he asked one companion, uh, why didn't you wake up for the night vigil prayer? So night prayer uh, in Islam is not obligatory, but a lot of people do it to uh, get nearer to Allah. It's a way of getting closer to Allah. So uh, one of the companions, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, he was one of the very big companions. So uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, why didn't you wake up for night prayer? And he said. Um, my soul is in Allah's hands So if he wakes me up, I'll wake up If he doesn't wake me up, I'm not wake up So Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went away He didn't answer the Sahaba And the next morning he said وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ أَكْثَرَ شَيْءٍ جَدَلًا This is a verse of the Quran uh, he, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam answered his, uh, what he said uh, The people, they are all the time making excuses And making up things to uh, And making up arguments Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said so um, the book I was reading just now was saying um, it's a normal human trait that when things bad things happen to us, we will 
put the blame on others. So one of the things which is normal for the shaitan or the uh, devil to disturb us with is to tell us, oh Allah planned it for me, so that's how it will be. So actually this one is, this is a totally wrong thing. So the uh, uh, the Sheikh Muhammad Al-Ghazali, I was reading his book, he was saying that Allah has decreed every single thing and everything that we do is true. But that this decree makes us forced is not true. It's a made up, made up fallacy. It's not true at all. Ya Allah Alam. Uh, is this clear? I hope it's clear. You can ask more questions later if you uh, want more clarification. Okay. So I'm going to finish with this last part. Allah's decree. Okay, so uh, there's a discussion on Allah's decree, the things that Allah has decreed. Uh, they, can they be changed or can they not be changed? Okay, so in Arabic, I'll, I put the Arabic words there. Mubram and Mu'allaq. Mubram means unalterable and Mu'allaq attached or dependent on some things. Okay, Allah's decree is mubram or mu'allaq. Either unalterable or attached or dependent on. Okay, I will ask you first. If I say Allah's decree can change, if I say Allah's decree can change, does this mean anything? Does this mean uh, something will happen that Allah does not know? Does it? Yes, it does. If I say... If I say oh, this, the, the the decree can change. Okay, for example, this person is supposed to be. Okay, this person, person, person is supposed to live up to sixty. Then I say, okay, the decree can change that the person can live up to eighty. This means that Allah was not sure he would live up to sixty or eighty, or Allah's knowledge was something that was still unsure and he didn't know. He didn't know which was it, eighty or sixty, right? So what the scholars have said is that Allah's decree, they are the decree is written in lawhim mahfuz in the preserved tablet. Is the preserved tablet? There is a place in the heavens which is called the below the heavens in the heavens in the heavens called lawh al mahfuz, the preserved tablet. So there, all the decrees are written there. Okay. So there's a, a, a hadith which says that when uh, is uh, when one of the leaves which has your name on it false meaning you die okay so that's the place where the angels who allah has divided the task of carrying out the task on the world on the people on his creation not only people but everybody else also the angels they have access to that place and from there they can see whatever is happening okay okay so the decrees there they are mu'allaq they are attached on or dependent on some are unalterable. Okay, for example, who your mother was is unalterable. Okay, but mu'allaq, uh, mu'allaq attached. There are some things which can change some decrees. For example, uh, you get um, hadith uh, prof, uh, sayings of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You say, um, whoever gives sadaqah, who gives charity, will have a longer life, right? Uh, if you have seen that hadith. So does it mean that his life will change? Yes. A mu'allaq, meaning in the law mahfuz, there is something, I don't know how exactly it will be. Like for example, I from my imagination, uh, it, uh, most probably it's not like this, okay? It's my imagination. It will be, uh, this person, if he doesn't give charity, he will live up to 60. If he gives, up, gives charity, he will be, he will live up to 70, for example. Okay? Example. So that's mu'allaq. That's the decrees which are linked, linked to something, dependent on something. So when this person, this person, okay, he really decides. So the de- decision, decision is up to us. But we do not know all this. Okay, the angels they have access to it. Okay, so this person, uh, one day I maybe this person is me, for example. May Allah give us all long lives in iman and me. So um, uh, I saw a charity box and I decided, okay lah, I'll give some of my money. So I give. So in the lauk mahfuz in the tablet, okay, this person he has given charity. So okay, the life is prolonged. For ten more years, maybe. Okay, for example. Okay, or I saw, then I decided. Okay, lah, I want to give lah today. I want to use this money for something else. Okay, then okay, your life will end at sixty. Okay, this is an, this is an example, eh? Okay, so Allah's decree is in the law of mahfuz. Some are mubra, some are mu'allaq. Okay, okay, but in Allah's knowledge, it is all mubra. In Allah's knowledge, Allah knew I would give the charity or not. In Allah's knowledge. Okay, so Allah's knowledge, so it's uh, two different things. In Allah's final knowledge, 
It is all unalterable. That means Allah knew I would give charity that day and my life would be prolonged. But the angels, they didn't know. So the angels have access to this mu'allak and this mubram. Okay? Why is this so? Because if I say that, like I said just now, if we say that Allah also is have to have, it is subject to this attached decree, meaning he does not know which will happen, which is impossible because Allah's knowledge knows every single thing from the starting of time. Okay? So Allah's decree is un- in the lauh mahfuz, in the tablet, some are unalterable, some are attached. That's why we are told to work as much as we can because maybe some things might be reasons for us to get some extra good in the world. So that's Mu'allaq and Mubram. But Allah's decree, the, please don't get me wrong, Allah's, in Allah's knowledge, it is all Mubram. It's not Mu'allaq. It is all unalterable. Because Allah knows which are the choices in the attached or dependent category that we will make. Okay? Ah, oh, okay. Uh, that's one of my friends that time we were, she was saying in a group, uh, you know that... Um, Goosebumps books eh? You know when we were young We read Goosebumps books Or some uh, adventure uh, Detective books So they will have like Okay you turn to this page uh, You can turn to One, two, three page choice You can choose If you go to this page This thing will happen You go to You, you won't know lah You have to follow So you Okay I go to page 50 Okay then I go to page 50 Okay uh, in the past What I, I would do I don't know if any of you Any of you does that I will check all Then I follow Then I follow again I will follow Ah yes, enter the door. Don't enter the door. Enter the door. Yeah, you know, you know, right? Ah, that's the mu'allaq one. Okay, but in the future, but the writer, he knows what will happen to every ending, and the writer, he knows. Uh, the writer, yeah, the writer doesn't know, but Allah Subhanahu wa Taala knows which choices we will make. But we are not forced because we feel that we can make our choice, right? I don't say, okay, I want to do something. I don't want to pray, but I am forced to pray. No. I can do my choices, right? Right? So it's uh, the choices we do not know, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. But it doesn't make us false because we do not know them. Allah alam. So um, may Allah grant us all tawfiq to carry out, carry out our responsibilities as best as possible. Uh, any further cl- clarifications, please do not uh, be shy to ask. Uh, I think there was a question about they wanted some small papers, can? Yeah, but then. You can text lah. Uh, you can WhatsApp. Okay. Later, Sada Farhana will give you details on how to ask questions. It will be like Tawfiq wal Hidayah wa Bidadai wal Inayah. All the good was from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Okay. Then this one last point. Uh, Allah uh, the scholars they say all everything has been created by Allah, but it is our adab or our uh, etiquette or politeness towards Allah to give to attribute all good to Allah and all badness to ourselves. All was created by Allah, but as a, as a politeness Like even to your principal You will not blame your principal for something bad But if the person is good You will uh, praise the person For example Allah Alam So all the good was from Allah All the bad was from myself Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh So uh, basically Any question that you have You can WhatsApp to my phone Right. Uh, I put my number and the email that I sent out to remind people, right? But if you missed out, right, the number is 88... Type it out now if you want. Right. 8812474 Right, so you just WhatsApp that number. Right. It will be anonymous because I didn't see any of your numbers unless you know me personally. Then I know your name. <laughs> right, so uh, uh, most of it will be anonymous, right? But if you want to really ask, if, you, if, you, if I know your name, probably I have your number in my phone. Then you can write the question down on a piece of paper and pass it forward if you're too shy that I might know your questions. <laughs> Alright, um, Alhamdulillah. Okay, Alhamdulillah, I hope that was clear. Right? And any questions, please type it out and uh, send in the WhatsApp. We'll go, we'll, 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 we'll go through it in a while. Alright, so now, uh, Susan Mariam, right, she will just go through a few things. Uh, from Surah Yasin, right, that speaks about uh, free will. So, uh, so Maria, she spoke about Qadar and Qadar. Right? I hope it was clear for me, mashallah, a lot of enlightening things about right? what she said, right, that, uh, like, for example, uh, uh, destination that is uh, right? that it is, it is, it is connected, right. So, and this one, I, I also learned it when I was studying overseas, right, about how dua, right, dua is one of the 
connections right for something to happen right so it's mentioned for example right like nabi zakaria nabi zakaria in, in the story of nabi zakaria is that he was meant to have a child nabi yahya right but throughout his life until his old age he never made his dua for a child he did not then finally he made his dua for a child right so it's really this time that he's going to have a child right but it is connected to the dua to be made that's what the tafsir was mentioning about that this dua was to be made for a child to come right so it's, the sense it's connected right that the door has to open right but, and Allah knows you'll make the dua right Allah knows you'll make the dua and the child is going to come right but he didn't know Right, but eventually he did his doa and the child came, uh, Nabi Yahya, uh, alayhi salam. Right, the Prophet Yahya. Right, so so you know, and, and there are many, 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 many throughout the Quran. So the Maria will be going through Surah Yasin. Throughout the Quran, there are many examples of this. Many, many examples in the stories of the prophets of the past. Right, in the stories of uh, uh, the pious, the righteous. Right, throughout throughout the history of human beings, you will see this example right, of how do we understand predestination and how do we understand free will. Right and 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 the, the right the right understanding is the middle understanding. So you're not as the minus you're not forced, right, into anything. At the same time, there are things that is out of your control, right. So like for example, like for example about waking up for school, right, waking up for the morning prayer, the dawn prayer. You could say, okay, I I I, I hear the other, I choose to wake up, right. But you don't actually determine if you will get to the most. You can choose to take a wudu, you can choose to wake up. It could be that you get into the next day, you die. <laughs> that one's not your choice. That one's not your choice. Right? That one, and that is on, and so, so, so Allah will not say, why don't you pray subuh? Like, you're on your way to the mosque. Right? So he won't have hold you to account for not praying subuh. On the other hand, if you hit the other, and you're like, but you're sleepy. Ah. So you say, I'm going to sleep. You sleep, so you choose to sleep. Then you sleep past subuh. And you woke up, it's within morning, the sun is up. You miss your prayer. That one Allah can say, why didn't you pray your subuh? Right? Because you made a choice. Right? That one is within your control. And the other one was not within your control. You got into an accident, you died on the spot, for example, or you passed out whatsoever, you went to the hospital. Right? May Allah uh, protect us and our children. Right? But it could happen. That one you're not held to account. Because it's not your choice. Right? But your choice was you went caught up to, to go for the prayer, for example. Right? So Maria, uh, so Maria, so Maria, so Maria, uh, if you uh, you ready? Okay. When you sit down, you sit down. Up to stand up. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Right, you can. Can I hear? Yeah. I'll try that in my ears. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? No. Can you hear my voice? No. <laughs> All right, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wabishrahi sadri wa yassiri amri. Wahlul uqdata min lisani yafahu qawli. All right, um, one of the... Hmm? One of the... I, I never like the mic, actually. <laughs> okay, one of the uh, reasons that we had here, we are talking about free will here. And uh, some people like wonder, do, do I really have free will? No, like everything is arranged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows everything, everything is written down in the book, you know, and whatever I do, some, some people have said that, you know, people say, what to do is already tough day that I become a bad person. Is that really right? Is that right? Are we supposed to say that? Then, then what, what was the, uh, what's the reason? that we really have free will. And one of the main reasons that we know that we can see that we have free will is the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent messengers. Why would he want to send a messenger if everything that we do has been decided on us? The messenger is sent to make us think, to make us uh, to make us understand, right, that that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have responsibility in this world, we are supposed to do certain things that Allah wants us to do. So the whole of the Quran actually is, is, is aimed at appealing to our intellect to understand the reality of our life on earth. Alright, so I'm, today I'm just going through Yasin, which I find very uh, critical, or in fact, the, the substance in Yasin actually shows, points to the fact that we do have free will. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started Surah Yasin with 
swear with Yasin or Quran al Hakim. It means Allah swear by the fact that the Quran is wise. Not the Quran is full of wisdom, but the Quran is wise. It's as if the Quran is a, is a creature which is a wise creature. And when you read the Quran, and you, sorry, um, Yasin is the, 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 by the Quran which is wise, right? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was one of the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, a declaration of a messenger. A messenger and Allah says that he is on the right path. So Allah introduces this thing called the right path in Surah Yasin with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They talk about the struggles that Rasulullah has to go through because he's got two groups of people. One group of people are those who just impossible to penetrate because they've got walls in front of them and walls behind them and they're so arrogant. And the other group, they have this fear of Allah in their heart and Allah asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to announce to them the rewards of obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of having fear in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then Allah moved on to tell that there is this life right, that is death which Allah gives life and then there is this book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we understand that some dead people dead as really die dead and becoming alive or the heart is dead Allah can give life to the heart so that means that means you are to talk to them, to, to try to remind them. So if there is such a thing as a reminder, which means that we are supposed to think and make decisions. That's the whole idea of being reminded. Why do you want to be reminded if you're not supposed to make any decisions? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us an example of a group of prophets, uh, sorry, messengers. First Allah sent two. Still not, not able to convince his people. Then Allah sent a third one. And then still you're not able to convince these people. And these messengers were very good. If you read Yasin, you learn Yasin, you realize how the messengers stood up, stood up to explain their mission to bring the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then with the messengers is this another person who comes running to convince people of the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he tried to rationalize. He said, why? Why shouldn't I listen to this prophet who doesn't ask money? No economic interest. Why shouldn't I pray to Allah who is the one who creates me? Why should I not believe in my God who, if he wants to come, nobody can stop him and he wants to give me benefit, nobody can benefit. So he tried to convince that these are the way the crux of the religion. That is, that there is this prophet, there is Allah, and there is this uh, harm, right, if you do anything against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is this power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who can be calm and who can be good so this is the man who tried to convince and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us realize that this man eventually was given heaven and in heaven he himself was so sad that his people couldn't understand him couldn't appreciate what he's doing so Allah brings us from one one scene to another scene to convince us that there is this thing called heaven if you do good you'll be rewarded and if you do evil even in this world you will be punished where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said because of that bad treatment of these things of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah sent a shark but just one shark and that's it they will destroy the sign. So here we are reminded of the reality of the mission of the prophets, which was not easy. They had to struggle, some of them were killed. In this case, this person was trying to advise his, his fellow um, villagers and he was also he was killed. But the sincerity in him was reflected right down until he was in heaven where he felt so sad that they wouldn't listen to him. And here Allah has been merciful to him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Yasin, this is one of the critical things about us being Muslims, right? Is that Allah felt, Allah expressed the, the sadness that human beings, despite Allah sending out message after message after message, they still turn away from the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it shows the folly of the human beings. They're not using their aqal to think of the reality of the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah brings us to think again, because we are human beings, creatures of Allah that are given intellect. To think, when Allah says we use our aqal, that means we're supposed to use the knowledge that we are given to stop ourselves from following our desires and our lusts. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings our attention to his creative abilities. He talks about the plants and the, and the, the plants and the and the rivers and the food that we take. And he talks about, you know, and, and then he asks us, why do we give thanks to 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reflect on the food. Look at the food that Allah gives us. Give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because ingratitude is where you understand the creation. The, the, understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the one who gives us with lots and lots of things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then brings our attention to the sky and He brought us our, our attention to the day and night. These are powers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Change of day and change of night. And then He brings our attention to the moon and the stars and how the moon and the stars move in tandem with each other in floating or in a certain orbit. So all these are mites of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are able to reflect on this, then you start to think and you will make a choice to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah moved on to talk about to talk about the transportation. And in this case, Allah did the example of the heart. You know, if He wants us to be drowned, we can be drowned. But He gives us time, right? He gives us moments. So these are moments which Allah has given us. At times, we might just die from a fever. Nobody knows. You know, we, we think we are fine. But in a car, all of us goes, goes in the car, goes in the bus, goes in the MRT. How sure are we? We'll not die in that day for some accident. No, none of us are sure. And even if it is an accident, if we are given extra life, then we are supposed to have what? Taqwa. Allah asks us to have taqwa. And taqwa, Allah says, those who have taqwa, Allah will bless them with His mercy. So here, here again, Allah is trying to convince us. Right? The Quran is all about trying to convince people to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah moves on to say, despite the fact that Allah reminds people to have taqwa, they turn away from the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the condition of the human beings. Allah asks them to spend their, their, their spend on what they have. What do they do? They argue. They argue. They say, oh, why should I spend on people whom Allah doesn't want to, to give? Why? Allah doesn't want to give. Why should I give them? It's their argument and they, are, and they start to challenge. Bring on, bring on the condition. That is a problem that Allah has even shown the arrogance of the human being. Instead of thinking, instead of obeying, they start challenging the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah says that, Then Allah brings us, then when they challenge that, Allah says He will come. Just when they are busy arguing and arguing, arguing, they will come and they will not have even a, a, a opportunity to make a will. Why talk about the will? Because human beings living in this world, earning money, having all kinds of things, they want their money to go somewhere. So they want to make a will, but they don't even have time to make a will because they are busy arguing and not obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now Allah use the word when the horn when the horn Allah brings us to the moment where the horn will be will be sounded. When the horn is sounded, Allah says we will be rose from our ajdal. It's beautiful. I find it so amazing that Allah uses the word ajdal here. And the translation they say the grave. But actually ajdal are graves that are forgotten. Because the Arabs used to argue, oh, who, our forefathers, oh Lord, who oh, they are dead. So how can they be raised up? So Allah says, they will be raised up from their ajidat, the graves that were forgotten. We don't know where they raised up. For all you know, down here is a grave. Allahu Allah, who so, uh, knows? Right? Because, you know, like people are living now when they go to the condo at Jadari. Jadari is a big, big grave. <laughs> One day nobody will know that it's a real big, big grave. You know, all kinds of genes living there. Anyway. <laughs> And then these people will come out of their ajdad, right? And they will be in fear, and then they will say, uh, and they will say, oh, who brought us up from our Marpadina? And that is another word for us to speak about. Marpadina, translation, grave again. But actually, it means a grave which is temporary. Right? So temporary is that they know, they are told, whatever we are, our grave is temporary, we'll be raised up, we'll be brought down to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of this, we'll be meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah says on that day, nobody will be wronged in any way, all will be repaid according to their actions. So it's all about actions, you do right, you get right, you do bad, you do you get bad. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about those people who will be in heaven, who are good, they will be sitting on thrones, on shades, and busy with all their rewards, and then Allah will send salams to them. And then, those people who are criminals, Allah says, go, oh, all criminals, get out, move aside. And then I tell you not to uh, enslave yourself to the shaitan, why follow the shaitan is your enemy? So Allah is reminding us, huh? Devil. Devil. Oh. Shaitan in the whole of the world, you know? Yeah, Shaitan. Yeah. Or Satan. Alright. <laughs> Alright, Satan is your avowed enemy. Why are you following him? Why do you enslave yourself to him? Why do you listen to him? He has diverted many, and what do you use your heart? What happened when you use your brain and brain and, and you know all the knowledge and wisdom that you have? So this is the hell 
higher for coming to you. Go and roast in it. So, let's tell them to just. So, this is like depicting all the seeds. Why? I want to depict all the seeds to remind you to make a decision. To ask yourself, this is what I want to do. Where, where am I going in life? Am I following Allah? I want to follow the devil and get roasted and, you know, be in hellfire. And Allah even say, on that day, the mouth will be sealed and the hands and the legs will talk and tell everything. Right? And then Allah says, Allah has lots of problems. If Allah wish, Allah will cover your eyes. You can't see and you can't compete. People are competing in this world. Compete, compete, one this, one that, one, all kinds of things. Right? But if Allah wants to shut your eyes, one day you wake up, you cannot see. Or one day you wake up, you are paralyzed. In your very house, you are paralyzed. Then you will move. You're not going to go up and down. And that's life. And in, in, in life, everybody will go to a beginning stage. Don't say, oh, I'm beautiful. I'm eight, eight, 70 years old, so how beautiful I am. But your organs are beautiful. Lah. For sure, your heart, your lungs, whatever, is all getting worse and worse and worse, right? Alright, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then talks for the Quran back again. So this is coming towards the end. Usually the, 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 the surah will actually let like, move from one topic down and after that we repeat again in a different way, in a very creative way to make us understand the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says this Quran is so poetry, right? Rasulullah s.a.w. is not a poet. It's just a reminder, a really clear message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's the reason? To warn the living. The living are to be warned so that you know, their heart will become alive. And those who reject, then they will go to hell. Right? They will be, they have been warned. But also that comes back to inspiration. He created the cattle. He created all these things to serve mankind. To give food, to give transport, to give uh, drinks. But why don't they give thanks? But instead of giving thanks, these people can worship gods under the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But and hoping that these gods will help them in the next world. But these gods will go against them in the next world. Right? Because the fact that they have gods, which is not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means they will be trapped. This, the, 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 the very uh, concept of having other gods means in the next world you will be questioned for not worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah does Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These people, these people, Allah gave them so much. They still don't want to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are a prophet, your message is to pass on to them. If they don't want to listen to you, well, it's even worse with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given them their life and everything and food and everything and they turn to other gods. So you shouldn't be sad because Allah knows what's revealed and what's, what's revealed and what's uh, secret. Men start arguing again. So this is men always trying to argue. Argue. Take a bone, take the bones, throw the bones in the air, crumble the bones. Who's going, to create, who's going to recreate this? Now, when the Arabs are concerned, their concern is that, what? Their argument is that, when you are dead, you cannot be raised up. So if you cannot be raised up, then there will not be accountability. So if there's no accountability, then do whatever you want to do, which is not true. Allah is trying to tell us that you will be accountable for your actions. So Allah says, if the one who can create you from the start, right, he can create you now also. There's no difficulty for him to create. And he can create the skies and the earth and all that. That is more, much, much more difficult to create. Right? Because he is the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says that he is the one who creates and he is the knowledgeable. And he brings our attention to the tree that he creates. From the tree you get fire. It's amazing. If you think about it, the tree you get fire. Right? It's only all the creative abilities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or something, oh no problem, I'm going to this. Yeah, no, it has no photosynthesis. Who gives the chlorophyll? Who gives all the other things? Who makes the chlorophyll? You know, the plants able to combine things and, and create fuel for us. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because He is so powerful, if He wants anything to be done, He can say, good fire. He says, be and it will come. That is the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? He is the owner of the, He is the owner of the, we glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for in His hands is the kingdom of the whole of it, everything of it, and eventually we will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the crux of Yasin. Yasin is called the heart of the Quran because it's supposed to shake you up, make you realize that you, are, you have a purpose in this life, and your purpose in, in this life is to be servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you are brought, you are made to understand that you have a choice here. 
So that is why all the various scenes are brought down to you, reminders are given to you of the prophet, of this the importance of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of heaven and hell, of the day of resurrection, all this is in Yasin for you to remember. So imagine if you are about to die and people like, decide right Yasin to you, then you start thinking, oh, it's all the message. Well, you're about to die. Right? Better, better to hit the Yasin right now rather than to think about it when you are left about to die. Okay? Alhamdulillah, and Alhamdulillah, Surah Yasin is one of the uh, very powerful surah. It's a very powerful surah, and you do see that, 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 that throughout the Quran and the Quran itself, the Prophet Allah himself, all the prophets, right, they have been sent down. These are all these are very strong proofs that you have a choice, right, as mentioned by Sister Maryam at the beginning. If you had no choice, then for what the reminder, right? If you have no choice, then for what the message? For what the messengers? And for what? Well, what's, what's the point if there's no choice? And they're sent for a reason. They have, they have a job to do. They came with a message. They, came the, they, they are messengers from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remind you right, of, your, of, 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 what, uh, of, of the pledge you took from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before you came into this world that you forgot about. Right? They, they all, all, these are all reminders. And throughout the Quran, Allah says, these are reminders, reminders, reminders for you. Right, to be reminded and then act upon. And Allah gave us the mind to be able to decide what do you want in life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and think about that, this is the example about the teacher who knows about the exam. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, throughout the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the result day. <laughs> and throughout the Quran, He speaks about the result day. People who will be this, people who will be that. And how come they are like this? How come those who pass the exam? What did they do to pass? And those who failed the exam, what did they do to fail? Right, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the, 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 the result day. He tells us what's going to happen on the result day. Right, so he said, a teacher who say, you know, uh, on the result day, right, those who did not study all these chapters, you all, you all will fail. Right, you all will fail. I'm telling you right now, you all will fail. Right? And the teacher says that to make you study. Right? She doesn't say that to just you know, make you say, oh, you're all doomed. Right? She says that to tell you, study. If you don't study all these things, you will feel, you know, you will. Right? So it's like, like and, then, and then the student says, no, I don't study. And then when they feel, oh, she made me feel. You know, any teacher will say ridiculous. Right? This is not, this is, you chose yourself not to study. I told you to study. And I told you those who will not, those who don't study, they will feel. But of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as somebody mentioned, in his infinite knowledge, he knows who will not study and who will study. In his infant knowledge, which is not part of our business, right? It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's in his account. And we don't know. All we know is what's going to happen in the very next moment. Right? Even that we don't know. We just know what's happening right now. Right? And then, and then therefore, we have a choice. Right? On my part, inshallah, I'm just going to wrap up very quickly. <laughs> I actually want to have more time for questions, uh, but we just wrap up very quickly. Okay. Masayna Muhammad, how do I do this? All right. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Okay, living with the degree. Sister Marida mentioned, right, that this thing about the degree and predestination is Allah's business, basically. Basically, as, this, as, as you are thinking about something today, that's Allah's business. Right, why is our business? To choose, right? To choose where you are told to choose. Right, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the entire time, right, through the prophets and the Quran, right, He tells us what are the choices to make. Right? What are the choices that, we should, that, you, that you should make if you want this result? If you want that result, then these are the choices you make. If you to make these choices, then this is the result. Right? Then for you, accountability. Right? So how do we so what does this belief? Because this belief in the, this belief in this decree, in the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the position of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have established that it's none of our business, basically. It's, we can't even encompass it. We can't encompass what this means because we are all timed creatures. Right? We, we, we only understand time because we've only experienced time. We've never experienced timelessness. We don't know what time, timelessness means. Right? God is beyond time because God created time. Right, so, we, so, we, so why this, this issue, 
as the writer said, it's been in, it's been you know uh, in the human beings' minds from the beginning, and till today, it's something we cannot grapple with, right? Because it is speaking about something that is beyond us, right? We understand space, we understand time. Allah is beyond space, Allah is beyond time. So we cannot understand this in its entirety ever. We can't even understand our time right now, right? Because with every person, their time is relative to them. For me, I might think that this entire event went past very quickly. Two hours. <laughs> so fast. Some of you in the crowd might think, so long. <laughs> right? So, the time is so long. In perception. Right? Even that, I can't understand. I can't understand your time to my time. Right? We can't even know this beyond our, our, our understanding. So, one of the questions I asked is Maria actually, in us, you know, we were preparing this. So, what's the point in me believing in this? If there's nothing for me to do, right? Choice, I understand. I can, I can choose. So, what's the point in me believing that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has predestined everything? Everything is in the decree of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in His will, in His power, in His knowledge. What's the point of me believing this? That was my question. That was actually my question also. <laughs> I had the question. What's the point if, of this belief? Why does some say it is one of the six pillars of belief? Why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say it's all a six pillars of belief and Samaria pointed out that he even repeated the word to believe. So to be, so so is uh, belief, iman, faith, it is to believe in Allah, in God, in the angels, right, in the prophets, in the book, in the last day. And then he repeated and to believe. I mean he said it two times. He said to believe in these five things and to believe right in the decree. Which which, which whereby he emphasized you must believe in the decree. You must. But then I'm wondering, then what's the benefit of believing in the decree? What's the benefit? I can't change the decree. Nor can I encompass it. Nor can I ever find out <laughs> what it is. So what's the benefit for me in believing in this? Right? Understand what I'm saying? Right? The benefit of believing in angels. Right? You believe that there are creatures that is beyond our perception. We believe in, the, in, in, in their work. The benefit of believing in the prophets. The benefit is that you take what they say to be truth, to be absolute truth, and you do as they say. Believing in the book, right? There's benefit, of course, that whatever's in the book, the Quran, it is true to the letter, right? And I, and I take on, I take it on, and I, and I follow exactly as it says. You know, you know, you know about self help books, right? And self help books are written by human beings. And many times when I read these books, I will disagree with some things in there, right? Because it's written by another human being, I have a right to disagree, correct? Right? Uh, about books about parenting, you know, a lot of you have read books about parenting. There are things in these books, books written by other human beings. I can say I disagree with this point. I disagree when some people say, oh, you know, attend to your child every single time they cry. Uh, for me, I disagree. For some people, they, they agree. Right? Because it's a human being who wrote. When I believe in the book that is from God, subhanahu wa ta'ala, I don't disagree with anything. I agree with everything in the book because the Creator is speaking. And the Creator definitely knows what's right and definitely knows what's wrong. That's why oh, my belief in the book benefits me. In that, I take it absolute. There's no doubt that this book is correct and whatever I don't agree with, that means my perception is wrong. You see, there's, there's, there's a benefit. And then the benefit of believing in the next world? Accountability. <laughs> and when you believe in the next world, that you die and you will get up and, you, and all of your deeds will be, will, will be brought in front of you and you have to account for all of these things. It benefits me now that I think, okay, I'm about to say this word to my husband, or I'm about to say this word to my mother. I will be held to account. It stops me from saying that word. So belief in the next word benefits me. Then what about this belief? Belief in the decree. I, I mean, for me, I was wondering, how does that benefit me when I believe in the decree? Because it's all set. Like, how does it, how, where is the benefit in this? Right, so I'm just going to present. But what the scholars have mentioned right, about this. So this is a summary, yeah? Summary. Allah's knowledge is timeless. Right? So the principles in believing in decree and precision, basically I'm going to give you a, a summary of what has been uh, mentioned. Allah's knowledge is timeless. He has full power over everything and His will is over everything. This is what Salamayla covered. Right? He's over everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. He's all wise, all loving, most merciful, most just. That's so what we learned in the previous chap- in the previous talk about the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That as he has decreed, he has decreed right, in accordance to what we know of his attributes. 
He is not unjust. He is not. And he said, I must mention this. He was discussing, discussing uh, previously, uh, all of us, right? As to when Allah decreed for you things that are out of your hand, out of your hands, Allah will hold you to account, right? Or He will judge you depending on what He gave you. So if Allah gave you intellect, very high intellect, He will judge you based on that. If Allah give you lesser intellect, He will judge you based on that. If Allah gave you parents, right, who are, uh, uh, who do not teach you the religion, He will judge you based on that. If Allah give you parents who brought you up well on the religion, He will judge you based on that. If Allah subhanahu wa gave you some sort of uh, 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 emotional trauma, emotional problems, on the day of judgment, all of that will be held to account. That means the judgment will be based on what He gave you. So you can't say that, oh, she is like, someone who prays all the time and fasts all the time whatsoever. Oh, she's better than whosoever who is struggling to give up the five times a day prayer. Allah knows. Allah knows what He gave her and Allah knows what He gave her. Right? So we know that Allah is all wise, all loving, most merciful, most just. And your judgment is not a, it's not a like you say, you know, a work solution whereby for teachers, we mark papers based on the answer scheme next to us. But a good teacher, a good teacher will not see that if it's not in the answer scheme, answer zero. A good teacher will read the answer. Right? She will read the answer and she will see, okay, is there a, a wrong phrasing here because of weakness in language? Right? So a good teacher will look through it and see, oh, this, the child is not strong in English, but her explanation for science is correct. Right? So a good teacher will not penalize the English, but just, but just see, okay, correct answer, bad English, full marks. Because I'm, I'm, I'm judging her on her science knowledge, not on her English knowledge. Right, you see that? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on the day of judgment, is not like a, like a one template, or oh, you don't fit, hellfire, you know? No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will judge each person based on what was given to him without his choice, and then based on the choices he made based on what was given to him. See that? And that shows the complete justice of God subhanahu wa ta'ala that is unattainable by human beings in this world. Impossible. You go to court? Impossible. You can't say she has a mental disease. You can't, you know, she, the court will say she stole. You no, know, she, she, whatever she did. Right? But you can't say, no, when she was young, right, her father, her brother, her, 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 her mother, her, there was something that happened, trauma, 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 right, led up to this. The court can try to put in all the factors but they can't give a really just uh, judgment. God can. God can. He can do that. And he is in it because of his full knowledge, timeless, full knowledge and power and, and his wisdom and his loving and, and, and his love right, for his creation. Allah is doing all of these things out of his infinite love and mercy for us. Right? So, you see, when, when, you, when you understand it helps you, one of the benefits, it helps you get close to God, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It really does. It helps you get close to God, subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm going to go a bit quickly. Eh? Okay. The principles. These are the principles eh, about Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Principles about ourselves. Our knowledge is limited. Right? We, we can't even encompass our now. You want to encompass the entire of creation? <laughs> cannot. Right? So you cannot judge why, why this, this happened and that happened and this happened. You can't even understand your own life that's in front of you. Right? So our knowledge is limited. Our perception is limited. When we perceive things, we might think it's not fair, it's not right, it's this and that. But we know again, our perception is, even with human beings, you might disagree with somebody else thinks it's wrong and somebody else thinks it's right. So even in our own, with human beings, we differ in our perception. We see it as, no, this is completely wrong. And they have to say, no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. Right, so smile. So even as, as human beings, we, we, even amongst ourselves, we can't decide on what's right and what's wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the only one who knows what is ultimately right and what is ultimately uh, wrong. Our judgment is limited, of course. And even in our own human experience, we experience this. Right, which is why we cannot compare to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is, it shows how we really. You cannot compare anything right, to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, has. Alright. All right. So all that is on us is to do as God says to achieve eternal bliss in this world and the next. That is on you. It's not on you to try and figure this out. <laughs> You're not supposed to try and figure this out. What's on you? 
سمعنا وقع I hear, I obey right? I hear, I obey Because we believe that God knows what is best for His creation He is the most loving and the most merciful All that He has commanded is from His, from his absolute mercy and absolute love so We believe that We hold on to that right? And that, from there we have, we have bliss in the soul and the next This does not in any way make us a fatalist or makes us helpless Right? It basically draws a line between what is Allah's concern and what is your duty. That's all it is. This kada and kada it draws a line. What is Allah's concern? It's Allah's <laughs> Allah's business, and what is our duty, which is obedience. Right? Even someone asked the question about you know what if I can't understand the reason behind laws? You're actually not held to account to figure out why laws are there. You're not held to account. Of course, if you understand why the laws is like that, for example, somebody asks why. You know, must we fast? Why must we go for Hajj? Why must we pay zakat? Why? If you never in your life figured it out, nobody will hold you to account. Allah will hold you to account for not doing it. Right? You're not, you're not meant, you're not, you don't have to figure it out. But if you want to, you can. If you want to, but you're not even, you're not even, you're not even. Allah Alam, Allah knows whether be, or not you'll be rewarded for figuring it out. You'll be rewarded for doing it, but for figuring it out. You know, it's for you, right? If you want to figure it out, okay. Let me just go there. Applying all this to life, right? How do we apply all of this that we have spoken about today to life? The scholars have mentioned about seven points, and there's more. There's way more, right? A lot of benefit to this, be- to, to this belief, right? This belief, not this belief, eh? To this belief, right? In the uh, decree and destiny and predestination, and also in free will. The first is, is the acceptance of Hajj. It helps when you believe that all that has happened right, is happening from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the absolute knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whom you have been worshipping to the best of your ability and you've been trying your best to obey and to get close to when, 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 when difficulty afflicts you. Right, you say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi roji'un. For surely we are for Allah, and for surely you will return to Allah. For all, and, and, and the Rasulullah will say, Whatever Allah, Allah uh, gives, whatever He gives, and He takes whatever He takes. Right, in the hadith. Right, what He gives, whatever He gives, and He takes whatever He takes. Right, this gives us, it helps us emotionally to help, to, to handle hardship. It helps us emotionally to handle hardship. When it comes to you don't you don't you don't like how can this be? This is terrible. How can you know you, you go into some people they can go into uh, mental uh, disturbance, right? Because they don't know how to evolve, don't know how to, to, to be content or to just take things. It is hardship from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah knows what he's doing. Right? I don't know what he is doing, I don't know why he for example, some people he took my child, you know, why why he, he let this accident happen, why he let this we don't know. We don't know. But we trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We trust. He knows why. He knows why. There is a story. Very interesting. Surah Kafi. Very interesting. Eh? The story of Nabi Khidr. Right? And Nabi Musa in Surah Kafi. Right? And this is, you see, the dust paint, uh, the, the situation whereby he walked past a boy. Right? Nabi Khidr walked past a boy. And he killed the boy. Small boy. Killed the boy. Nabi Musa says, What are you doing? And how, you know, you did something that is. That it is a munkar, right? It is something that is, that is evil. And Nabi Khidr said, Did I say not to ask me? Right? Nabi Khidr is going around by Allah's Allah's command. Later on, Nabi Khidr explains this boy. And, and if you look at the, at the expression of Sir Kafi, right, about the story of the boy, he was born to parents with very long murajal. Right? They finally got this boy. Nabi Khidr killed the boy. Right? He said, This boy, if he grows up, that like he's going to be a person of disbelief and tyranny. Right? And by then he's gonna force his parents, who are two believing people and, and, and righteous people, he's gonna force them into uh, 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 disbelief and tyranny, right? Uh, under him. So him dying now is actually mercy for those parents. And Allah thereafter, in the explanation, Allah gave these two people a daughter. They actually got a daughter thereafter. Because Nabi Khidr said, May Allah and Allah wants to, to replace him with someone that is better. Right? So then he got a, they got a daughter, and from this daughter, it is, it is mentioned that she had uh, descendants 
right, who were prophets. Because it was a before the Rasulullah's time, right, so they were Ambiya, right, prophets, right, they could be of the descendants of these righteous people. So somebody who didn't, didn't understand the decree, they're like, how can, who killed my child? You know, and you get very upset, very angry, and you hold on to it, you don't let go, you don't say, Inna lillahi wa inna rajiun. All power and all might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah takes what He takes, Allah, Allah gives what He gives. Allah knows that perhaps it's not good for me. Allah knows, you know, it will be bad for me. Allah knows. So acceptance of hardship helps you. Yes. That child, yeah, that child in the first place. Allah subhanahu wa because he knows why he gave the cover that child, right? He didn't tell us why, right, in the Quran. Right? But what we could guess, because what is beyond our knowledge, we don't know. What we could guess, right, is Allah wa'ala, maybe, you know, is to test, maybe by the death of the child, it brings his people closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The child it goes to paradise, because the child died before he, he reached puberty. So the child goes to paradise, as is how children are. They die before puberty, they go to paradise. Perhaps, but this is my own guessing, because it's not Allah didn't say anything, but it's in the Quran. Right? My own guessing. Right? Perhaps, with the death of the child, the parents became more righteous. They turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They got close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Perhaps, like, that, that with this child, is a, and, and that there was a story about a man who said that whatever happens to you, to you in your life, you don't know if it's a blessing or a curse. You don't know. Right? The only factor that can tell you whether it's a blessing or a curse is if it brought you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or brought you away further from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or it could be right, that with this child, now they have lost the child and they get a new child. Right? They really take care of this child. But it could be that that child affected how they will be with their second child. For example, you, know, you never know, you know how things happen to you in your life. Right? And you know in our life, you know, you're going through this person who hurt you and you find someone else and you appreciate the person more. Right? By the one who hurt you in the first place. You see that? Like how, so so it, everything in your life is, is planned. Right? And it is it, step by step. So, you, so we don't know. And, and in our own lives, in our own experience, you look back on your life. You will see many instances where by, at that point you wonder, why did this happen? Like at that point you wonder, why did this happen? What's the point of this happening? Then in the future, now where you are at, how do you like it happened? Now I understand why it, why it happened. You know, like like you know, my husband will always say about his, you know, his experience. He was married before he married me, and he said when he got divorced in the first marriage, he would always question why was the divorce? Why did I marry in the first place? You know, why was I divorced? Why? He said he, it bothered him so much. But six years on the road, he saw the reason. Right, and married wrong person, <laughs> basically. Right, but, but he said he, he would say to me when at that point when it happened. I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, you know, I don't, then you can say, I don't deserve this. Like, I don't even know why. Like, what's the reason? He was it up for the for, 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 for longest time. It bothered him, but in the future, oh, now it makes sense. <laughs> right, so maybe at that point in time, you don't understand. Of course, I would say that Allah has ultimate knowledge. He knows why He gave them that child. He knows why. And that child is meant to die. Right? And some people, you know, they, they have children that live, Rasulullah had three sons. They didn't meet the age of two, hardly, barely. And you're wondering why did Allah bother giving him sons? To, to break his heart three times. You know, and the loss of his children, he cried, the loss of his children. Why did Allah bother giving him? Or that, and you can really ask the question why does Allah bother giving people children to die? Why? Allah knows, Allah knows why he gave them. I said, so it's, it's acceptance of hardship. It's difficult for us to understand because we, our, our knowledge is limited. <laughs> you can't see the entire worldview <laughs> of what's going on. Right, being grateful for blessings. This will be the answer. Right, being grateful for blessings. And right, Allah Subhanahu wa gives you your blessings. somebody asks the question, you know, if, Allah, if our risk is given to us, written for us, then what if you waste it? Right? Is it written, that, is it written for us that we will waste it? Right? Then will Allah not give us any more because we waste our blessings? You know, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that if you are grateful, Allah will increase you. Right? And Shri Hamza, he mentions that the main reason for blessings to be pulled away from people is because they waste it or they use it in the way of sin. Then their blessings are pulled away from them. Right? So, and Shri Hamza mentioned that right, if you want to complain, Allah will give you a lot to complain about. 
<laughs> if you if you want to be grateful, I will give you a lot to be grateful about. Right? That's a choice. Your choice. You want to complain or you want to be grateful. So grateful for blessings that Allah Subhanahu has given you that you do nothing to deserve. Right? Qadar and qadar. Right? You see Allah give you all of these blessings. You did nothing to deserve this. Right? Makes you grateful because it's from the qadar of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. He apportioned this for you. He gave this to you. Right? So if someone was born to a rich family, to see Allah gave this to you. Right? It's from His apportioning. Right? And you be grateful for what it is. Right? It helps us have patience. Right? Because you know that there is a plan that's, that's going to come. Right? It helps us. I'm going to click a bit quickly. Brings us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Because you understand it's from His love and His mercy right? that He has done this. Right? Keeps us humble. So you don't say that if somebody you know, uh, achieves in the exam, for example, the example of the student who, who studied, right, that, if, that if she won't say that, oh, I got my straight A's, I'm so great, you know, so clever, right, no, Allah has decreed that you got your straight A's, alhamdulillah, the one who has decreed this, alhamdulillah, the one who has given me the strength to do this, alhamdulillah, the one who gave me the, uh, the, the, the understanding to study, alhamdulillah, the one who, who made me wake up, right, to study, no, maybe sleep, you know, uh, at night. So it keeps you humble that you, you attribute all of your victory to the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to yourself. Right? It prevents you from being complacent. Right? So you're like, oh, no, I'm, I'm going to go to heaven. <laughs> I don't know. If I don't want to say that, I'll go to, I'm going to go to heaven so I can do what I want to do before I die. I'll just stop that. You know, and, you, and you think to yourself, what if it's written that you die before you do that? You say, no, I'm going to talk about now. Right, so I'm going to repent now. What if you say you're going, to, you're going to die before you repent? Then you say, no, 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 I'm going to repent now. So it prevents you from being complacent. Then you say, oh, I'm going to do this when I'm, I'm, I'm 40. And you tell yourself, what if it's written that I'm going to die at 35? Right, then what? Oh, 35 now, I have three more years, four more years. What am I going to do? Right, so, so it makes you not be complacent. Right, and it keeps you focused on what is important in life, which is your decision. Right, your decisions are the ones that is the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right, will hold you to account for. Right, you must understand that. And the best thing about this situation, people, the best thing is that unlike any exam paper, because you keep using the, the parable of the exam paper, unlike any exam paper, whereby the teacher only sees the results, right, I mean, she sees the answers, and she marks according to the answer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees the effort. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, in the, in the exam paper, as a teacher, I don't know if my student parents are going through a divorce. I don't know. I don't know if my student, right, uh, uh, you know, lost her grand, grandmother that is so close to her. It's affecting her. I don't know if, like, my parents was telling me that, you know, her, 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 her sister was going through a, a, a breakup right before the exam, for example. And then the whole day didn't study. In a sense, emotionally disturbed. As a teacher, I don't know any of these things. As a teacher, I don't know, and I've seen students before when I work with them closely. They put in so much effort into the paper. They study everything that the teacher has to study, everything they do. They still fail. <laughs> and we have met those students. Alhamdulillah, Allah sees effort. Allah sees effort. So, Allah, so unlike us as teachers in this world, we mark and we give a D or an F. Don't, you don't... We can't consider, we can't take into account this person is going through fi- a family difficulty or this person is just, he studied very hard for the exam but he just got, you know, stress whatsoever, he didn't do well. We can't take any of that into account. All the law takes it into account. And all law rewards based on effort. He wants to see effort. Then, as my teacher will always say, so Zainab should say, all law, then Nabi Musa's story, the Prophet Moses, all law wants to see you strike the sea then he will split it. The splitting is his, is his decree. The sea will be split, it will be split. But he's waiting for the strike. You must strike. Right? Then he, he, of course he can split without you striking. He can. He can do anything he wants to do. He wants the effort. Right? Then he will, uh, he will open up the way. He wants the effort from you. Right? You come, learn. You come, try. You wake up. You... It's all on, on your effort. Okay. We'll pause there. Uh, uh, alhamdulillah. Uh, we're going to open up for questions. Really, really at the end of this hour. Uh, so, Zawar, Dia, so Zawar, Maria, I'm going to come up. Okay, I'm going to see what questions have been sent in. Eh? 
Uh, I have the questions that you all sent in through the Google Drops. Let me just open it up. Alright. Okay. Um, there's one question that was sent in here. I'm just going to take the one that's in my phone first. Right, someone sent a question in my phone. Right, uh, I understand we are not forced to do anything by Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do not know Allah's decree. However, Allah knows Allah's decree. Okay, Allah knows Allah's decree. It's true. I am unable to fathom the fact that Allah knows the final knowledge. So why do we still live if he knows what will happen at the end of the day. Even when someone commits suicide, Allah will know it will happen at the end of the day as Allah knows everything. Is it something that is beyond our knowledge? That's the first question. Right. Second question. Ustazah said that we will not be held accountable for anything we did not do. However, many said that fathers will be held accountable when their daughters don't do our right. The father might have already advised his daughter to do our right to cover her her her, uh, her body. Right? However, if his daughter's choice at the end of the day not to wear, will the father be held accountable? I'll answer the second one. <laughs> the first one, Maria, or second one, Maria, second one, Maria, second one, Maria. I'm gonna answer. <laughs> okay, the uh, the second one. Parents are held accountable for where they neglected. Right. So if you neglected teaching your child to pray, you neglected teaching your child about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wherever you neglected, that is your doing and you help to account. Wherever you did not neglect and you help up, and you did your best to fulfill your responsibility that's on you and the child chooses his own uh, path thereafter, after being taught and you try the best of your ability to teach, then the child's accountability on the child. Right, so you are held to account for your own doing. So neglect is a doing that you do. Right, neglect is a doing that you do. Right, you are held to account for neglect. Right, but if you did not neglect and you did your best, right, to teach, and they still chose the other way, right, then it is on them. It is not on you. Right, you are free. Right, of that. Okay. First question on. Hurry again. You hold my phone. I'll read it again. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I understand you are not forced to do anything by Allah. We do not know Allah's decree. However, Allah knows Allah's decree. I am unable to fathom the fact that Allah knows the final knowledge. So why do we still live if He knows what will happen at the end of the day? Even when someone commits suicide, Allah will know it. Allah will know it will happen at the end of the day as Allah knows everything. Is this something which is beyond our knowledge? Okay, if the quest the ending of the question, if this some is this something which is beyond our knowledge, that is true. Okay. Allah uh, cr- okay, it is true that Allah knows everything which will happen and um, he knows what is the final thing. Okay, but one of the things that Allah created us for is one of the things that Allah wants to give us is heaven. Okay? Allah wants to give us heaven. Allah does not want to give us hell. Well, Billah. Allah wants to give us heaven. So, so Allah created us and He knows our ending, but He tells us, you don't know your ending, so you work hard because I want to give you a good ending. Like the teacher and the student just now, uh, f- firstly, the question that is it beyond our knowledge? Yes, it is beyond our knowledge. We do not know what will happen. That means the student, she or he doesn't know what will happen. But if he doesn't study, he knows most probably he will fail. Okay, the teacher and student example. Um, so why do we still have to be a student? Okay, I'll use that example. Why do I still have to be a student? So when the teacher knows, I will pass or fail most probably. 
Why do I still have to be a student? Can I stand up? And the follow up? Sorry, uh, I missed that part. Uh, even when someone or when someone commits suicide, Allah will know it will happen at the end of the day, as Allah knows everything. Yes, so Allah knows that person. If for example, person A, Allah knows this person will commit suicide at the end of his knowledge. It's at the end of his day. Okay, but this person, he doesn't know that he will commit suicide until he chooses to do so to commit suicide. So he, his life will continue until he reaches the suicide and because he does suicide then uh, in in the day of judgment Allah will judge him okay why did he do suicide okay if you look at the hukum at the ruling suicide is a big sin it's a big sin and it would equal to hellfire but we cannot see that that means that is what we see from our side but in the end Akhirah, in the final day, Allah will look as Ustaz Zafarhana said, He will look at all the what is the reason you did it. Okay, uh, it, it still doesn't say that I am still not saying that suicide is correct, but Allah will look at all of it, all, all of it, and He will judge the person who committed suicide. Okay, so Allah, the, the person who does suicide, Allah knows He will do suicide, but He doesn't know that His end will be suicide. So when He chooses that suicide, that then the blame is on Him. Especially since in Islam, we know suicide is something which is wrong. So when he does the suicide at the end, the 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 sin, the sin is on him. Okay, Allah uh, Allah. If it's clear, if you want to ask someone also. Okay. This question is just this question is similar to saying that like, why did Allah create Shaitan? Why did He create Fir'aun? Why did He create Iblis? Why did He create because Fir'aun doomed. Right, and, and Fir'aun even worse. Fir'aun, Allah kept the Fir'aun, what did Fir'aun do? Pharaoh, Pharaoh. He went around killing all the baby boys. So, uh, someone will ask, why did Allah allow that to happen? And why did Allah let Fir'aun do that? And why did, and then this Iblis bothering us all the time. <laughs> why did Allah create Iblis in the first place? Such an annoying creature that Allah has allowed, and Allah allowed him to live to the end of time. Right, all of us have a decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can I answer that? <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, if Mr. Zafarana said, why did Allah create uh, Shaitan? Why did Allah create Iblis? Why did Allah create all these creatures? Uh, in books, they say that it's uh, all these are tests to see who can get higher ranks. Right? When you have difficulty and you pass them, the test is difficult. Uh, o levels is more difficult than PSLE, is it? <laughs> okay, okay, I don't know. I won't use that as a comparison. Okay, yeah, as a, sorry. Um, as a base, uh, maybe O levels will be easier than the university exams. Uh, I, I, Allah, Allah, okay, I'm not sure. Um, when there's the more difficulty there is, the more agile, the more uh, so what, oh. reward, reward there is. So when the more rewards, the more difficulty, the more rewards, the higher you will go into uh, in Allah's side. The more yesterday night I, I attended a talk about why do we go through difficulty. So it was very interesting because 
the ustazah said there are three reasons why we go through difficulty one is Allah wants to show us that he is in control not uh, not us who are in control that means we plan then we don't get something we do who we, we plan for or for any other reasons next is Allah wants to get our heart back to him which is very interesting so she was saying how sometimes we put our heart totally to something else until we do not um, we do not put our heart to Allah so sometimes Allah takes the something away to get our heart back to Allah unless it's to Allah wants to tell you that the, this world is not your point okay? uh, not not your point of why we are living in this world it's not the world, it's for the hereafter so when Allah created all these things the more difficult thing, the more difficult things we have to go through the more uh, rewards you get and the more you will get in the hereafter Okay. Um, can I add about you know uh, the verse Yahdi man yasha wa yudhidu man yasha I think some uh, I saw some questions on it yeah okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah no uh, Allah guides whom he wishes and Allah misguides mis- mis- or leads a stream mis- whoever stream. he wishes so the scholars they say this verse um, in this verse Allah guides whoever he wishes Allah guides the Allah leads a stream whoever chooses to be a stream. That means, uh, as I was talking about choice, so whoever choose, when they get truth, and they choose to be a stream, Allah will leave them a stream. And Allah gives guidance to those who choose to get guidance. So, sometimes, something, some people might ask us, how come, you know, I, I always think, sometimes when I go on a bus, and I see some so good people who are non-believers, then I will be saying, why did Allah leave them a stream? Sometimes that, thought will naturally come. Especially if we have good neighbours, we have good people who we know. So, firstly, I have to, for myself, I will tell myself, oh, uh, everything is predestined, I do not know. But my part is, I have to, I, I have to try and get the person to believe. That means, reach, about, uh, explain to them, uh, not explain to them, but show them best example, so that they will believe. Because Allah says, Yahdi man yasha, wa yudillu man yasha. Allah gives, guidance to who or whoever Allah wishes if the person wishes to be guided and Allah will lead astray leave astray whoever wishes to be left astray whoever chooses to be left astray or whoever chooses to be to get guidance Allah Alam that's what the scholars say about because I always hear this question uh, why especially because we are living in Singapore we live uh, in a community which we have uh, many different religions people of different religions Allah Alam Okay, well, actually, out of time. But I would like any question from the on the floor. Uh, I just want to ask this: that like, you heard one of your slides says that when the mind of uh, all this to life, you say acceptance of hardship. Mm. Uh, but could it be that if I don't accept hardship, that means I will be the other? You know, I mean, that will be the good side as well. That means to say, yes. like, for example, it's my my child is sick, you know. And Says, oh, this is a uh, but then because I may not accept that, so I find the best doctor, mm-hmm. find good, and then finally she's cured. So, how do you uh, reconcile that? What, what I mean yeah. by acceptance uh, does not negate effort. Uh, to accept something that means, like, for example, that you don't have resentment in your heart uh, for it, like, or you blame everybody else, or you regret only, 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 only. Right, especially for something beyond your, uh, be, beyond your control, right? Something beyond your control, right? So that means, for example, like you know, may Allah protect us, but accidents, so that's beyond our control. So you don't like, you know, I hate that person, I hate this person, like it is resentment. Like uh, acceptance does not mean that you don't actually seek solution. You can accept something and then seek solution, right? Non-acceptance is to be resentful about it. Right, and to eat yourself up inside, right, and to and to just go around feeling so much uh, hatred, right, to all around you. There's a non-acceptance of it. Yeah. So so when difficulty happens, okay, my child is sick, right? I don't like uh, I don't I don't cry my eyes out and like, you know like like non-acceptance means to do that. Cry my eyes out. No, I am destroyed. My child is like that. And who put him in? Who let him? Who let him go out last night? And because he went there, now he's sick. He got the bug from somebody else in school. His classmates were sick. Now he is sick. And see the school. The school. <laughs> this is called non-acceptance. Blame the school. Blame the classmates. Blame everybody. And that's why my child is sick. I I I'm very upset. 
think this is not acceptance, right? Acceptance is okay. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah is fallen sick. Right? We did try our best to not be fallen sick, but oh God, let's super fallen sick. What do we do now? Okay, let's look for a, for a cure. Right? That means you don't you don't beat people up or yourself up, right? For the decree, right? But this is not at all say that you don't look for cures, right? Because you know it is only to look for cures. It is only to look for solutions. To Allah give you a mind to do so. Right, so so acceptance does not mean that you sit down there and you know just sit there. <laughs> That's not the way it means. Right, it means that you don't uh, get angry about it. You don't get angry about the decree. Right, some people get they get angry that why did Allah like allow my uh, my my I don't know my father to die. He's a good person, right? Why did he allow my my father to have a short life? Such a good father to me. Why did that? Like, you get angry over the decree. Right? That is actually a disease. To be angry with a decree is a disease. Right? You understand? Can you answer? Right there? On the road, eh? Sorry, sorry. You're late already, right? Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, give me a few minutes. Um, if you look at books, they say that uh, belief in Qadha and Qadar, uh, the lack of belief in Qadha and Qadar was the one which led to the downfall of the Muslims. Because there was a time when the Muslims were at the peak of uh, everything. They were peak of, They were the leaders in medicine. They were the leaders in development, in, uh, in buildings, in science. everything, in science. So you can look at uh, history, Islamic history in, in uh, Islam and science. So um, belief in qadha qadar is the one of the biggest things which makes people do as much effort as they can. So actually, it, it should go the other way. Not most people, because they say now, they say because of Qadha Qadar, oh, uh, Allah has predestined everything, so I'll just leave it. But actually, the Sahabas, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, they know that everything is predestined, so they will work for the best choices and they will do the best to get the best. So it will actually, it should actually bring us to do the best. So if, for example, if we have a sick child, because we believe in Qadha Qadar, we will say, oh, we don't know if Allah predestined, that he will die or he will be we will get cured and be healthier than the past. So you will look for the best medicine, the best doctors to, and you will always uh, ask from Allah also because you can do everything. But if you don't have Allah's help, then you won't get it. So you you know the qadha and qadar is in Allah's hand, but you will work for it and you say can uh, Allah says wa an wa an laysa wa an laysa lil insan illa ma sa'a wa an sa'yahu sawfa yura. The person doesn't get except what he works for And his what he works for, he will see So because the Muslims believed in that They worked the best they could to spread Islam to the whole world That's why Islam reached the whole world Because of them believing in Qadha Qadar the best way they can um, The scholars say Us and Qadha Qadar Our limits in believing in Qadha and Qadar Qadar is like the farmer The farmer plants, he puts water Right, but is it him who lets it grow? No, but we believe that Allah is the one who lets it grow. So, the the scholars say, plant the best seeds, and Allah will grow it, uh, make it grow into the best, most pretty roses for you. But you can plant the worst seeds, and Allah will make it grow thorns for you. So, we uh, believe in qadar and qadar make us people who are. And high just aspiration, high. It actually pushes up your aspiration. It, makes, it heightens your aspiration because you don't. Is it? Is it? Really a, is it really a two way? You can choose to just let go and then, and then for you is the that path, right? Or you can really try your best, right? Inshallah, for you is the path, and Allah subhanahu wa taala rewards effort. You need to comment. Okay, we need to we need to close, right? Uh, the class. I'm just gonna go through a bit, a few of the questions, right? Uh, that uh. Okay, the risky one I went through just now, right? Um, that you know, of course, when Allah says the Quran Himself, when you are grateful, Allah will increase you, right? And of course, the more you complain about, the more you'll be given to complain about, right? And that is basically your choice, your state. You choose to be somebody who complains, you choose to be somebody who is uh, uh, finds fault in everything. It's a choice to choose to see the, the bad in things and not to see the good in things. It's a choice. You choose to be grateful for however the minimal things you have and you choose to be ungrateful even if you have the entire world. It's your choice. So the, 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 the choosing right, to be grateful or grateful whatsoever, what is uh, uh, enough for you, what is not enough for you, it's a choice also. You choose that it is enough or you choose that it is not enough. You actually choose. Right? How, and, 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 
Right, uh, so it's not that it's thin. Right, uh, to view fuel fuel as useless. <laughs> Actually, no, it's very easy. Right, do you really want to view fuel fuel as useless? Just stay down. Okay lah. Stay at home. See if you'll be full. Right, it's very easy. Stay at home, don't go to work. Okay. If you want to say about, you know, I have no free will, everything is ready, there's not destined for me, okay lah, stay at home. Stay at home, don't do anything, see what happens to you. <laughs> it's very simple. We as human beings, from our own experience, we know we have choice. From our own daily experience, we know we have choice. We know you have to go out and work. Right? And then to, 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 uh, to, to give, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala determines. Right? So, if you want to ask somebody who... This is a murder estate, right? Whereby you have no choice. Right, not to be. Uh, whereby you, have, you must know what you have a choice, what you have no choice in. Right, so like death. Usually, death we have no choice in. It's not our hands. Right, death. So, so that's when they don't have the acceptance of death. Right, that can be a, a disease. Right, so, uh, so the balance is basically where you have choice. So the writer said, wherever you have choice, you strive the best you can. That is the believer. Right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in the hadith right, uh, of the meaning that the believer is the one who strives for excellence. Right, the believer strives for excellence in whatever he's in. Right, that is the, 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 the true believer. Right, so, uh, and, and to be in despair right, is to have, to actually, uh, it is actually to not have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is, which is actually a disease, to be in despair. Because you, it's as if Allah can't help the situation. Right, that is, is it disease eh, to be in despair? Right. Um, yes, you must put the most of effort. Okay, you must. Right, that's the answer with that one. Right. Uh, strengthen your faith. That the ulama do say that every day to recite seventy times. La hawla wa la quwwata illa bil hasbi Allah wa niyamal wakil. Hasbi Allah wa niyamal wakil seventy times. Right. Hasbi Allah wa niyamal wakil. Allah is enough for me, and He is the best of uh, wakil. <laughs> he is the best. He is the best helper. Right. Allah, Allah is enough for me and He is the best one whom I, 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 I rely on. Right. From the word tawakkul. Right. Okay. Allah is enough for me and He is the best of whom I rely on. Right. 70 times every day. This is basically uh, uh, from the Prophet of Allah from the, or from the scholars. Right. That it will help your heart. Right. Uh, increase you in your faith. Right. That you allow. Right. Whatever. MashaAllah. Uh, uh, right. That is. MashaAllah. Right. That is. Right. Every morning, every evening, as we will say that whatever Allah has will will be, and whatever He has not will, will not be. Right. And there is no might, no power except for, by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. These are all from the Prophet of Allah to say on a daily basis. Right. Uh, and then. Right, if Allah has chosen someone to embrace Islam, why am I still not biased? Choose piety. <laughs> so you choose piety and you try your best to be as biased as you can. And then, and then ask Allah and also at, at the same time ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you the energy and give you the ability to be as biased as, 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 as He would love you to be. Ask Allah. Right, you're, you're not dead yet. Right, it's not the end yet. There's still this path you're, you're, yet, you're yet to run. Right, sprint. And you can choose to walk and sit down and lie down. <laughs> or you can choose to sprint. The path is still there. Right? So for us, you know, so if you say, why am I not biased? Be biased. Inshallah. Ask Allah to make you biased. Inshallah. Allah can, Allah can do so. He can do so. Right? Uh, right. Uh, destiny. Uh, for example, if... You know what? You don't know when your destiny is until it has happened. You actually, like, before you fall sick, you don't even know that it is my destiny to die from your sickness until you actually die. <laughs> you don't even know if you're meant to be to be cured. So you can't even say this is my destiny. I am I am doomed or doomed. Like, I am meant to be married to this person. I you don't know. Five years on the road, maybe he marries somebody else. Maybe he dies. You don't know. You can, nobody can say what is my destiny until it actually happens. Then you can say that's my destiny. And after it happens and it has already happened. Right, so then how can you say, you know, do I leave it, do I let it be? But don't you do you not do you not know is this the destiny or not? Which is why the the, the, the most of the past they saw it in a way whereby they say, do the best you can. So your destiny will the best will be the best of what uh, you can possibly achieve, inshallah. And do the best you can, uh, in a way. Why that you want to comment? <laughs> I'm going to very quickly, right? So it, um uh, can we change? We don't change anything. 
<laughs> and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows. We change what we didn't know. Kata in Qatar. There's, there is a hadith whereby Sadaka, if you, yeah, the Mu'allak one, where you choose the one that he spoke about, that if you take this path, this will happen. If you take this path, this will happen. Allah knows which path you will take. Right? But you are choosing it. We cannot, you need to understand that Allah's knowledge is not Allah's forcing. But so I get pushing that across. His knowledge is his knowledge. Allah, it is in Allah's right that he has perfect, full, absolute knowledge. That is the right of Allah, but that is a wajib for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah cannot be deficient in his knowledge. Right? That is none of our business. It's Allah's business. Right? So 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 and we don't even know if we are what is our kata and kata for us to change it? You see, you, you, don't, you don't even know the ending for you to be able to change, to, to be able to change it. To change something, you must know what it is. Right? Then you can change it. How do you change it if you don't know what it is? Do you understand me? Do I and effort? And that, that is, and, and it is in your kata that you will do ah and you put in effort. So you can't say that you're changing something if you don't know what it's going to be. Right? You're just going on the path that it's meant to be. Right, inshallah. So, 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 Saraka removes uh, calamity. Like, charity removes calamity. We know that. We are told that. Dua removes calamity. Dua brings goodness to you, right? Dua is a, is, is a. We are told a lot of things for us to do. We do, we act on the moment. Right? So, whether or not it's changed or not changed or whatever, we can't even tell if it has been changed. <laughs> because we don't even know what it was supposed to be. Right, you don't even know what it's supposed to be. In a, in a way, so I would say that. Right, that um, Allah subhanahu wa taala knows that. Right, so of course, if, it's, if Allah knows He's in hell, He's in hell. If Allah knows He's in heaven, He's in heaven. Right, so we don't know. We really don't know. My dear, uh, comment just now about the lady on the bus where you see somebody who's so righteous, so pious. You don't even know if she's going to go to heaven and you're going to go to hell. You don't even know that. Like, are you going to die a believer? You don't even know that. Like, you don't know anything. All you know is that at this point in time, I will do the best I can do. That's all we know. And that is all that's on us, right? To figure this out. So whether or not it can be changed, whatever, like it's not, it's not for us to even figure out, right? right? Even if you do figure it out, then what can you do? <laughs> in a sense, that like, you just know you're now, right? You're now. Okay? Yes, your efforts and your prayer, prayers is part of the decree. Your efforts and your praise are all part of a decrease, all part. So basically, the entire thing summed up, you act on your now. Right? You act on your now, you act on what you're told, right? and then Allah, may Allah, and Allah is all fair, is all just, and Allah will not treat anybody unjustly. So you try your best, for sure Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not treat you unjust, for sure. Any last comments? Right there. That's fine, fine. Okay, we'll stop there. So sorry for dragging uh, on a bit longer. Uh, Masayna Muhammad. Uh, there are no more questions that I got. Did I get any more questions? No. Okay, alhamdulillah. Uh, we, are, we will have our, inshallah. Uh, you all have my number. Right, I'll repeat my number. 881-2474-0. Right, uh, you can WhatsApp me if there's any further questions. The, the, as I mentioned before, the entire point of this talk right, is really to help us uh, deepen our belief. Right, help us understand this matter of this life. Right? And also, right, those who have come here, right, to spread. Right? If you know of your cousins, your... Okay, 881 It's in the email that I sent out. Right? It's right at the bottom. Right? Okay. Uh, and it's also for you to, to tell people, right, especially if you know somebody who is uh, having problems with this. This is actually, you know what? A lot of these questions, they come from a devil. The devil will come and whisper to you, you know what, you are, you are a terrible Muslim, you're a terrible person, you're this, you're that. It's decree that you're not going to pray. It's decree that you are drunken. It's, this is the whispers of devil, right? Because he himself said, so 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 he makes you feel this way but we know that you have a choice get up pray stop drinking you know stop stop gossiping stop it stop it stop it you can you can right so inshallah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us taufiq and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to obey him as, as, as uh, Rasulullah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown us how to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be people right, who will uh, spread this message fine right
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all of us and our loved ones and those who uh, and, and everyone all together may to die on this on this on this path. May we bless us in la ilaha illallah and we be raised la ilaha illallah and let every breath of our life to the end of every breath that we take to the end of our life may be filled with la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the fact that Forgive us for any shortcomings and uh, give feedback to me. And uh, I want any future talks, I will post it on my Facebook or my Instagram. And you can follow me there. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.
I don't know.
Ja, ich will das nicht sehen, aber das ist auch so.